I needed a job right out of college, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like mm -hmm. 20 years old, whatever. School wasn't for me, dropped out. I was yeah. actually a basketball player uh -huh. and then, you know, all that kind of stuff. Could have nice. gone maybe overseas to play, but uh -huh. then I would have started over coming back. So I said, I'm, I'm just gonna get started now. Got it. Entered the workforce, went and started painting houses for a gentleman, for a contractor. After about a year of doing that, I was like, man, he's making a lot of money off of me. So I was talked to my buddy. I was like, hey, you want to start a painting business? And mm -hmm. so we went and started a painting business. And then there was dogs. And so I started working for a company training dogs. And then um, train, I, training like dogs to do what? Like obedience and oh, okay. stuff like that. But my my heart was in the protection dogs. Got it. So I loved to do the protection dogs. So I started doing that or working for a company and then I started doing that on my own. So okay. it's always that's always been like kind of my progression. Learn and then start your business. Yes. Learn exactly. and then start your business. Mm -hmm. That's that's a good model. And so then at the age of twenty seven one thing led to another I started doing jujitsu maybe at like twenty six. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, um, uh, had a gentleman come in, he needed a sparring partner, I jumped in, um, and he was like, you know, I beat him up pretty good. I mean, the, the coach was like, you need to give it a shot. And I said, okay, sounds good. So I started at the age of 27. Um, and I was signed to the UFC within a year. Wow. And then three years after that, I was ranked third in the world. So where we're going with this is, is how you dive in, yeah. right? It, yeah. It's like you see people that really get the most out of this regenerative. regenerative when they, when they dive right when, in. When they dive right in. Yeah. So that's just been how I've always been. And so now, fast forward, um, you know, how, how a number of years. Now? I'm 41 now. So 14 years ago, you started fighting. Yeah. And are you retired from fighting now? I'm I'm somewhat retired, still under contract, so. You're not feeling like fighting right at this very moment, no, are you? No, okay, no, good, definitely good, good. not, no. <laughs> So, so yeah, so then fast forward to this and, and um, it actually started like, I wanted to have a secure s protein source for my family. Yeah. And my wife was like, uh, we should do a regenerative bag. And I was like, oh, okay. Like I had no understanding what that was. I'd never heard it. I was like, we're just gonna be raising cattle. And she said, regenerative bag. And so talking to my partner, he agreed. Okay, we'll, we'll all do this regenerative ag. So then I started learning about it, mm -hmm. and now I'm diving in, and I'm at a soil health academy, and yeah. it's it's uh, so so much more than I ever thought it would have been. More knowledge, more work, more needed knowledge, more what? All the above. Got it. Okay. Like just more, yeah. and and which is a good thing, yeah. right? And it's not more in the sense of. Um, overwhelming yeah it's like more in the yeah. sense of like it gives you a lot more hope Got you know it. what i mean yeah, so well, i do so it's really amazing to see what this style of ranching of farming is really getting back to working with nature mm -hmm. and how nature intended yeah as much as possible in this given world right we're not going to go completely back to wild everything yeah but within this within this context this is how you're going to work with mother nature yep. to raise the best protein that you can do. So, um, we're here. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and so when your wife said we're going to go regenerative, mm -hmm. how long ago was that? That was when we started it. So I was in 2020. Okay. So, so basically the, the, is the, uh, is the, uh, the pandemic happening and you're like, yeah, Man, there's no secure food source here. Really? It's funny. I actually started before that. So, so what happened is in 2018, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a big bow hunter, so okay. um, all the protein that we'd eat would be wild game and, and all that kind of stuff. All the protein you'd eat. So you were, Mo most of it. I, I would it. say like, you know, if we went out to dinner, we're, I'm not going to be like, no, you know, I right. wasn't like anti but that. But at home, you're. But at home, we're we're cooking wild, you wild meat. Yeah, well, what whatever, you whatever we killed, hunted. Yeah, and so um, there was a there was a couple of times that I couldn't go out, and we were running low on meat, and we had just bought a property, a three acre property, mm -hmm. and I was like, how can we, you know, maximize this and and secure our own food source in 2018? So mm -hmm. I started doing research and. Everything I saw kept going back to the best tasting, best marbled, best flavorful beef was Wagyu. And mm -hmm. so I now found who's now my partner mm -hmm. um, in this business. And he 
was willing to sell me one calf. In the Wagyu world, they're not really, re- really willing to do that. They're, they're like, none. they're like, here's ten. Do you want ten of them? And oh, I was I like, no, I don't. I don't want ten of them. I only have three acres. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's, I can't do ten. I can do one. So I found, I found him. He sold me my one. Fast forward to when we harvest it. We've gotten close to this animal. I mean, he's halter train, halter broke. I, you know. He's walking around on our property, following us, nudging us, so we'd sit there and scratch him, you know? So the day that it came for harvest, um, it was an emotional one. Because mm-hmm. one of the things that me and my wife really believe in is taking emotional responsibility for where your food comes from. Yeah. And so raising this animal, we're doing all the work with this animal. I'm not gonna just ship him off to a slaughterhouse. He's gonna be all stressed out. And like, I would feel b- bad for that animal so being scared. So you knew scared. that intuitively? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I just like I, I just didn't want that. Like, you could see even when somebody new came around, he wasn't like the same animal. Uh-huh. Do you see what I mean? Oh, so, sure. so I knew that I was gonna be the one to pull the trigger. Yeah, and that was so hard thinking about that for days leading up because again, you know, this is my first encounter. Even though I've hunted animals, and you to didn't me, raise them. yeah, I didn't raise them. Yeah, this wasn't like. Yeah, it's just so, it's such a different experience. I've yeah. hunted them, I have no problem with that. I feel like I'm in their backyard. Mm-hmm. They have a, somewhat of an, an advantage, especially with bow hunting. Uh-huh. Um, you really have to hunt them. Uh, with, with this animal, with Kobe, who we called Kobe, our first Wagyu, man, he was, we we're just so emotionally connected to him. Like I said, we'd give him scratches, feed him. You know, if he wasn't feeling well, we'd figure out what's going on and, and help him. Right, yeah. came, they came to harvest them. I'm the one that that shot them, that put them down, and at that time where uh, I I told my wife I said I'm not doing this again. Mm-hmm. I'm just I can't do it. It's too, it's too hard. much. Yeah. You know. I can imagine. So after we harvested them, we took the hanger steaks mm-hmm. back to the house to cook that night. Um, we cooked it up, gave my wife some. She took a bite and she just started crying. I took a bite and I was like, this is the best steak I've ever had in my life. And and I know I was a little biased, there's emotional connection, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But we gave some to the kid, to our kids. And they're like, Dad, did you put butter on this steak? I'm like, no, dude, this just like we literally didn't put salt and pepper, just cooked it straight. Mm-hmm. And it was just the most amazing beef that we've ever had. Mm-hmm. So we, I called up, uh, who's now our partner, I said, hey, we're gonna buy another one from you. He's like, okay, sounds good. And fast forward a little bit, and he, him and I are just talking, just having a conversation. He's saying, oh, I just invested in some more mamas, and I'm gonna have to sell about three-fourths of the herd, or three-fourths of the calves to be able to pay for the rest of my herd, and that whole, the whole dilemma that ranchers run into, right, small ranchers run into at that yeah. stage of growth. Yep. And so I was, I heard that, and I, the wheels in my head just started spinning. I need and going, land. I, I need to figure this out, yeah. because this is my protein source yeah. forever, yeah. right? And yeah. I wanna be able to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. And ranching in general, I was ready for it at that time in my life. Yeah. So it actually started right in 2018. We started talking about it before the pandemic uh-huh. came. And then right like right before the pandemic, we're like, we're gonna start Browsy Acres. And we, you know, developed the business plan. Browsy like, Acres. Browsy, yeah. So it's like Brown it. and Rousey. Okay. Because without my wife, there would be no Browsy. Without me, there would be no Browsy. Without so, my wife, I wouldn't be talking to you right it, now. Yeah, exactly. At all. Exactly. Yeah. So um, so that, and, and the fans ate it up, to uh-huh. be honest with you. That, that's where it really came from. It was like, oh, the Browsies, you know? It's like they just, instead of saying Travis Brown and Ronda Rousey, it was like, oh, the Browsies, you know? Got and it, so yeah. it, it just kind of, it just took on its own life, you yeah. know? And we, we owned it. Yeah. So, um, so that's when it started, mm-hmm. uh, right before the pandemic. And, and so how long ago did you know you were coming to a soil health academy like when did you sign up when did you about two months ago okay so this is fairly new yeah and had you heard about alan williams before that or did yeah you? Okay. so i actually were were so we as soon as we bought the ranch mm-hmm. um my wife again my wife doesn't she knows that i don't do well when you try to tell me uh, yeah. to do something you know what so, I mean? so so my wife knows me she would just drop little hints about, you know, about like Joel Saladin and this and that and all that kind of stuff. So 
As soon as we bought the ranch, we called up Joel, had him come out. He gave oh, us sweet. amazing direction. Oh, cool. He spent the day with us oh, over there. Oh, okay, so you've already done that. So, yeah, but but that was, it was different than I than I feel like what's going on here. Okay. Um, he gave us amazing direction and some general infrastructure information and mm -hmm. how to bring in different species yep. and how that could end up paying for a lot of your ranch. Yeah. Um, so that's when, you know, and, and even then it was like, okay, this is cool, you know, we'll, we'll implement that. But more recently, for whatever reason, following Carbon Cowboys. What, huh? Yeah, following you guys. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like recently or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I, I started following you guys, I would say within six months, you know, something like that. All right. And like um, different, different, you. yeah, yeah. Well, and and like different regenerative movements and soil health care, and just learning. Like you start, it's like, it's kind of I guess like regenerative ranching. It's like you make a one decision, leads to another, and yeah. it starts compounding, yeah. and then it happens really quickly. Yeah, you know, because all your decisions just now you're you're here, you yeah. know. Yeah. And so that's what's happened for me over the last I would say six months, and mm -hmm. and at a place in our business where we're ready to sell product after four years. Oh, sweet. Yeah, so we just had our main harvest this last fall. How many animals? Uh, about 68. Holy crap. Yeah, okay. 68 beef. And then we've been doing poultry for two years now. And is it online or can people yeah. buy it online? Mm -hmm. What's your website? Browsetheacres.com. Got it. Yeah, yeah, so you, we do all direct consumer. I don't like the idea of doing wholesale because all the work that uh, our people put in, uh -huh. Gabriel, you met, yep. Daniel, yep. the families that surround us, all the work that we put in, I, I, it's hard for me to think about selling it at a cheap price for somebody else to make the money. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. right now we're actually in the midst, in the middle, like I've been having phone calls and texts and all that kind of stuff during this conference. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're gonna really start pushing the marketing of our business coming nice. up. Nice. Um, but but again, that like you know, as a business owner, you get just pulled in so many different directions. And right. right now, this is my time to learn a lot about the soil and how I can go back and what I can do to help my ranch. Yeah. You know, because we're we're so everybody on the ranch right now wears so many hats. Right. And I want to be able to take some of those away so that they can do their jobs better. Got it. You know, and I want to. Does that be able mean hiring in. more people, or does that mean just you doing more? I think I think I can do more, uh -huh. and then I and and I want to learn more too. Yeah. Like I I want to be able to have input. Yeah. You know, and and knowledgeable input, not just an owner's input, because mm -hmm. I think that's very dangerous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna listen to me because I'm the boss. Right. I, that, I don't believe in well, that. Well, we were just uh, interviewing Gabe, and they were loading up a a, a truck, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Lauren drove by afterwards and said that the guy who was working for him said, you know, yeah, it took 12 minutes, but if you weren't here, it would have taken 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want to get yeah. in the way. I want to be, right. again, you know, I, I feel like uh, regen ag is you're being a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. Yeah. And so when you're the boss, Man, sometimes awesome. you can kind I love of. I hearing what you're saying. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, it's. It's it's true, but I just like the way you're putting it. So this yeah, is cool. Awesome, awesome. Well, being the boss, sometimes you can get in the way. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. And you feel like you need to be there. Right. But I don't think bosses always need to be there. Owners always need to be there. And especially if they're not knowledgeable. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm gaining more knowledge so that I can go back and be an asset to our ranch and our people and I can help take some of that stress off and contribute. Right. Now, your ranch is in Oregon. Oregon. But your home's not in Oregon. Yeah. So how often do you get up there? Every month. Every month? Every month I'm up there. Okay. Yeah. And then what are you doing when you're, where do you live? In California? Yep. We live in California. Is it Riverside? Is yep. That, Riverside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that where you're from? No, I'm from Hawaii originally. Are you really? Yeah. And then my, my mother moved to San Diego and I went to high school in San Diego. Okay. And then um, I had, I have two older kids who are 16 and 17 uh -huh. and their mother got remarried and moved up to Riverside about two hours away from me and, and can... I can't be away from my kids yeah. so I moved on even closer to I moved like three miles from her which she might have been not so happy I don't know right. you know what I mean but right. um, so I'm a dad yeah. you know what I mean I'm a husband I get it. and I'm a dad I get it
And so we're right there next to them now. And, and they're 16, 17, so they're about, uh -huh. they're in, getting close to done with high so school. They're graduating. As yeah. soon as they are graduate, they, as well? they are. They play football. Football. So, yep. With, did you play basketball or football in I high school? I played basketball. And so it kind of broke my heart when they didn't want to play basketball, to be honest with you. Yeah, I got Because they wanted to play football. I was like, oh, man, like, I don't know anything about football. I know a lot about basketball. Right. So. And so what did you play in high? You must have been close to the center. You're you're like 6'8", aren't you? Yeah, I'm pl no, I'm 6'7", but six, seven. I played like the, the three and the four. Okay. So I played uh You had, a, you had someone forward. taller than you in high school? Uh, he was about my size. But he was but, better at the center? Yeah, but I think my skill set was mm -hmm. like, my, I came from a very small high school, so uh -huh. it was like, okay, get the ball to Travis, have him bring it up and pass it off. Let's run the play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, I'm, I wore multiple hats then, you Got know, it, it was yeah, like, yeah. I, I think I was like the more athletic one uh -huh. at, at the school. And I'm not talking bad about any, any of my schoolmates back then, but right. it's just kind of, I mean, I ended up being a professional athlete. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it kind of says it. So you play so. basketball and then you went to college. Did you play basketball in college? I did for a year. And then you left college. I left college. That yeah. must've been a hard decision. No, it wasn't very hard because school okay. wasn't for me, unfortunately. Got and that's it. where I feel like I have a little bit of regret uh -huh. is that I didn't stick school out yep. far enough. I didn't apply myself in school a little bit more. Yeah. Um, Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. It's not too late. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm serious. And I'll tell you another thing. Um, I'm at Arizona State University. Mm -hmm. And uh, the president of our school met the head of Starbucks. And Starbucks has a ton of baristas who started college and didn't finish. Mm -hmm. So my president, Michael Crow, said, well, why don't we make it really easy for them to finish college? Mm -hmm. And so anyone who's at Starbucks for over a year, you get, you're, in, you're already in ASU if you want to be. Oh, wow. And they've graduated something like 70,000 people. Holy moly. That's so, pretty awesome. So it's totally doable. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things. And you like, can relieve that regret. Yeah, there you go. Well, and, you're, and you're smarter now, too, so you'll probably get more out of it. Yeah, well, you want it. it's more of, uh, I've, I've, I feel like I've always been smart, but it's where I apply myself. Right. Like, I, I know that I have ADHD 100%. So when something doesn't, um, isn't attractive to me, uh -huh. uh, it, yeah, it's gone. And that was me <laughs> in school, like, oh my gosh, when can we get out of here? You know, like, uh, I didn't want to be there. But you could focus on sport, you could focus on basketball and learn the play. Well, I can focus on this now because yeah. I'm interested in it. Yeah. Because and I'm laser focused, like everything, and, and I'm repeating it back to Gabriel the next, you know, yeah. later that night. And he's like, what? I didn't hear that. I was like, I did. <laughs> I, you know, and I feel the same way. I was 40 when I sort of turned my life around and when I started making carbonation. I'm meeting PhDs, mm -hmm. hundreds of them, and I'm remembering everything they're saying. And mm -hmm. I never had that before. Yeah. It was like I wanted to. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now it's like, I just remember everything. Yeah. My wife's kind of blown away by it. I yeah. can't remember people's names. Me either. I'm but I can so remember about info. That. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's how that's how I feel like I am with this. Yeah. You know, it's like you're the ADHD, which people look at like. Uh, well, it's got to be a plus and a negative. Exactly. Yeah. I look at it as when it's applied right, it can be like it's your superpower. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, and that's yeah. what I tell my kids too, because I know my oldest son, he has ADHD, and and he struggles with school, and I and I and I've told him like, dude, I I, I get it. Me and you, you are your father's son. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I'm Acorn sorry. Acorn tree. I'm, yeah, Ooh. I pass that on to you. Yeah. But we, you got to apply yourself. I said you got to figure it out. We, you know, in our in in my house, um, to help combat what I didn't, to help combat what I did, mm -hmm. I put a rule in our house that you have to have B's. Yeah. No less than a B, unless and if you have less than a B, it's like you're grounded. Life as you know it <laughs> is done. No more, no more phone, no more TV, no more. You know what I mean? Video like, games. Yeah, no video games, and even at times no sports. Oh, wow. Like there was times where he, when he was a freshman, he had a C in the class. The varsity team called him up. I went with him to the varsity coach. I said, Coach, I'm sorry. Or I had him tell him, and he's like, Coach, I'm sorry, but I won't be able to play with the varsity team today because in our house we have a rule where I need to have B's or better in order to play. And right now I have a C in math or whatever class it was. Yeah. And so, I, you know, just teach him that accountability, accountability yeah, man. and how to be a young man. And, um, and so, yeah, that's, you know, just how I like to raise raise my boys but, i got a big old smile on my face man this yeah is awesome. but it can be a superpower yeah you know it, it can it can really help you out yeah i'm fetching somebody who's going to see this 
who has ADHD yeah. has never thought of it that way before. So yeah. who, how many people are you helping right now? Um, I don't know. We don't know. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, if it's one, I'm happy. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, man, we got to stay in touch. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, let me know. Yeah. And yeah, uh, being exchanged information. Do you, do you want to get a sneak peek of the of the series? I would love to. We send you all four episodes. And yeah. You, and you let us know. What oh, you think. my wife's gonna lose her mind. Yeah. Oh yeah. 